Now, what really goes on when you take a high-speed coaster ride? Our test subjects and a bunch of high-speed cameras are ready to find out. Have we uh, framed and focused this? Uh, no, that's our, that's our next step. It's a painstaking process. Once everything is secure, it's showtime. Scared, scared, oh, scared, scared, scared. So, how long is this ride going to take? It's actually 87 seconds of runtime on the ride itself once you've cleared the top of the lift. And when you're pulling up the second hill, you'll be doing three Gs. Awesome. OK, and once we get over the initial incline, it's all powered by gravity? It's all powered by gravity. Awesome. OK. All right, so we're ready to go. Gentlemen, all right. take your seats. All right, make sure your seat belts are good and tight. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, it's so nice out here. Yes! The car is pulled up the first hill mechanically and has no engine of its own. As it climbs, it builds a reservoir of potential energy. Energy that will be converted to kinetic or active energy as it begins its harrowing descent. As with many roller coasters, the first hill of Bizarro is the tallest. At the summit, there is the maximum potential energy. At the bottom of the trough, there is the maximum kinetic energy. And these peaks and valleys are used to maximum effect to make grown men sound like little babies. I'm really close to throwing. I'm just actively trying not to throw up right now. Yeah, I don't want him throwing up on me. Because if that was 20 seconds longer, I would have thrown up. And I may still. I really do not feel good right now. All we can say is the sacrifice our brave host made was worth it. At 1,000 frames per second, our cameras show the laws of physics at work. Newton's first law of motion says that objects, in this case passengers and roller coaster seats, move in a straight line at constant velocity, unless acted upon by an outside unbalanced force. When the coaster nears the bottom of a hill or goes around a corner, the seats provide that unbalanced force, pushing against each passenger's body. The passengers will all feel momentarily heavier these are positive G's. You're saying normally you'd be pulled down with gravity if you were falling off this thing. In this case, you're actually pulled twice gravity, so one extra G. One extra G. I weigh a slim 150 pounds. So do I. <laughs> and uh, at the bottom, I would, I would weigh 300 pounds. Gotcha. And it's spread out over time, too, so you feel it for a while. You could be seriously injured with a 3G if it's over milliseconds you know, the impact of a car wreck, you know. But uh, with it spread out over the time that this is spread out over, you just get that feeling of weightlessness and floating. Right. right. So what makes me feel sick? That? To me, it's the negative Gs. Right. The feeling of weightlessness in your stomach um, when you go over the top of a hill or when you dropped off of something. The opposite of positive Gs is negative Gs. When you approach the top of a hill and your seatbelt keeps you from flying out into the sky, there is less pressure between your bottom and the seat. The brain interprets this as less weight, or in some cases, weightlessness, also known as negative Gs. When people get sick, it's this reactions to things that our bodies never had a chance to evolve to deal with. 